Hi, Mark here from the Tangibound Podcast Network and host of the flagship show, the Tangibound Podcast. Did you know that we over at Tangibound are always looking for amazing podcasts to promote? And did you also know that we are also proud nerds and geeks of everything from movies, music, gaming, TV shows, and comic books to wrestling, MMA, soccer, and football? Whatever you can nerd or geek out about, we've got it. And if you're interested, we can help you find it. And if you're a show looking for a place to call home, we've got you covered. Side effects may include upset stomach, dizziness, tumors, shakes, and in some rare cases, death from excessive laughter. Though to be fair, it's only sometimes. Other side effects may include diarrhea, gallstones, heart palpitations, and strong desire for cookies on the dark side. Talk to your doctor and visit TangiboundNetwork.com and see if Tangibound Network is right for you. shocking to hear our voices again but it is 2023 Mm -hmm. and we are turning over a new leaf and we are going and i know i've lied to you in the past but (laughs) i'm telling you this now we are going to become more consistent for you and we apologize that we have been so lacking in our podcasting responsibilities but we are here now and we want to hear from you but you'll hear more about that later. Till now, I'm Jen, of course, as we've discussed. And then we have Brian and Hannah with us. Hey, guys. Hi. Hello. Yeah, By hey. the way, I looked at our, our power words for last year. Oh, for yeah. yeah. And, and I first thought it was an attendance report. Because <laughs> <laughs> when you see what they are, you're huh? Yeah, I didn't even think about that. Yeah, we'll have to. We'll have to get into that. <clears throat> Absolutely. I will say that this has been the absolute most surprising and growth year that I've probably ever had. It's been an absolute crazy year. And I did not expect any of it. Um, which is kind of cool, actually. That is cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's just life really just kind of said. Hey, and time for something new. <laughs> Party. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, hey, let's try something different here. So, all right. Well, who wants to start us off? Crickets. <laughs> Fine. I started I was... the new year. Mm-hmm. I, calling it projectile vomiting. Is call is is light. Oh boy! In what happened? Oh boy! I pretty much woke up at four. I'd already had an upset tummy, and I woke up at four, and all of a sudden it was like I was running to the bathroom, mm. and my stomach just clenched, and everything came out, and wow. it was like, okay, that was interesting. Happy and now New I knew year. it was because <laughs> I'd been around somebody that that had. They said they had a little stomach bug going around in the house, oh, yeah. so I knew what it was. And then there was one more, and then like another hour later, all of a sudden, I'm like, where is all this fluid coming from? Because I ain't drinking it. Yeah. <laughs> <'Cause> like... <laughs> and it was three times where it just remarkable. Like just I have not felt like that since I stopped drinking. 
And then that made me laugh about how like, and to think I used to do this to myself on New Year's Day voluntarily. <laughs> <laughs> yep. It was something. Uh, and unfortunately, I was supposed to work on New Year's Day and the day after, so I, di- I did not. Um, but luckily, the world didn't fall apart. And then, and that was on top of just Christmas, everybody's just sick. You know, it's oh, like boy. everyone's in town. We've had, we have had an, the most awesome year for our community economically and just the amount of people that are here and spending money. We have tons of snow and people came to ski and go out and buy and shop and rent. And it's been great, but all those people also brought all their little germs around. And so (laughs) there was so much going around and I got to play some great gigs. We, we got a new guitar player in the band and he, a week before Christmas said, so, uh, uh, how would you be up for learning like 27 songs? And I'm like, um, in how much time he's like a week. And I'm like, um, all right, that would be a new record. Sure, <laughs> let's try that. <laughs> nice. Yeah, it was great. It was really fun. And so I did I did two gigs with Patrick. It's just uh him on on acoustic guitar and he's really good too because he's been playing with us, but I and I'd heard some of his music, but I really hadn't heard him perform yet. And he great singer, great songwriter, great player. Uh it was it was absolutely a treat and to just it was wild to sit down and play all this music and and have none of it in my head and this is a this is a weird thing for me cuz eventually songs get stuck in your head you play them enough times and so i had no reference and so then i the next time we got together i he I had a whole songbook and everything to work on but i it meant nothing to me because i didn't know the songs yeah. so the next time we re, i recorded it and then that gave me something to practice to so by the time we had our first gig, it was like, I definitely, you know, it, it was not perfect, but there was more good than there was bad, which was great. And we actually pulled it off, which was awesome. Nice. Yeah. Just very cool. Yeah. It, it was really great. That made the uh, holidays a lot more fun for me and challenging. And then we d- got to play a gig on uh, t- a few days before New Year's at the the ski resort at one of the lodges in the afternoons and that's a blast you you know there's probably 500 people in that lodge just and people coming and going all the time and and uh and the sound ended up being really good um unfortunately patrick decided he didn't want to keep playing with us and and last monday let us know that and it's like okay well that's that (laughs) oh man yeah uh but in the meantime we're uh so we got together this week and kind of laid out the plan for the next bunch of months and what we're going to do. And I had at my, at my work, I, I haven't been on here in a while. And the last time I left off, we had, we were, I, I actually was hit a level of stress at work. That was just unbelievable. It, it like I was driving to work one day and I felt like I was going to throw up. Oh wow! And yeah. And it was a level of, of just, you know, I'm used to pressure. Like that's part of work. Mm. That's, that's part of it. But a level, that level of stress was something entirely different. And my win for that period was to stand up for myself. And, and basically we had a, a meeting and we were, I'd, I, I honestly was so sick to my stomach and I get into work and I make, I had to make a phone call to a friend of mine who happens to also be sober. And, you know, uh, he asked me how I was doing. I was like, you know, it's not good. This is like some scary stuff. And and I go, so we still having a men's meeting on Thursday nights. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And he's like, he's like, yeah, yeah. We're just in a new, new location and everything. You know, I was like, all right, cool. I'll I'll be there tonight. And, and so I went and uh, I went and there was like, there were, there were four of us total, but it was, it was great. Meeting was done. It was just great to be back. It was just a reminder of why I'm here. And then the trippy thing that happened was that next, like a few days later, Tom says, Hey, how do you guys feel about changing rehearsals from Thursday nights to Wednesdays? 
And I'm like, well, if that ain't a little message to like, hey, no, keep going to meetings. I don't know what is. Yeah, yeah. And and it was it was perfect because at that moment I needed I just needed that extra little reminder of you know why I'm sober, why I got involved in the program, what is my my purpose. And it sure as heck isn't being a project manager at the last minute for a bunch of people that want to change their minds and decide to do things not the simple way. <laughs> and that's what I was, uh, that's what was happening is at work. And we were in this meeting and I just I just told everyone, I said, that's great. You know, I absolutely support these ideas, but I'm not going to be doing it. I said, you can hire a project manager for this, but it's not going to be me. I'm like, my anxiety is already up like through the roof. It's like I've, I've come up with a simple solution that gets us along the way right now and you all want to throw a wrench in that you know you want to change that and I, and I don't disagree with it but at this point in the game right now it's not going to be me and what was great is my general manager afterwards said you know I'm glad you said that you know because he's like he's basically knows he's like you you guys are way over your way in over your head on this and I said yeah we are because I, I had sat down with with one of my coworkers and kind of laid out what we were facing with this leak. And, and I'm like, this is a week of no heating water to this building mm. a week in the, and that we can't do that in winter. Yeah. And, yeah. and I had come up with a solution that might, that was like, okay, this is two to three days instead if we have to do it. And because the whole idea is like, do we wait until springtime or not? Do we go for it or do we not? And in the end, they, we were going to just try to get it fixed. But then, uh, you know, as we got closer towards Christmas, the appetite to, you, you know, dig up this entire hole and replace all this pipe went down to nothing, thankfully. But it was great because it just felt it felt good to stand up for myself to know where my boundaries are, <clears throat> what I can do and 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 what were it's like, hey, and and to not necessarily push back, but to also like bring people back to reality a little bit. It's like, yeah. you know, you, you all have not looked at this. <laughs> mm. I've looked at the details. I've been in it and I will show them to you. And to still have disconnects was unbelievable, but you know, that's what are you gonna do? I've, I've, I, I, I got to practice a lot of patience and a lot of tolerance and it worked. And so then the next week I go back for the meeting and nobody's there. And I'm like, and I, and I saw, I thought I saw one guy show up and leave, but I don't, didn't really know his car. And so I got out and I went back to my car and I was about to leave and said, no, you know what? You never know who's going to show up. And sure enough, you know, my friend shows up and it's like, I walk in and we're just, we're just gabbing about anything. And this guy walks in the room. It's like, you know, is is this the meeting? It's like, yeah, come on in. And it turns out the guy was like, had been sober years ago, had a bad thing happen with some serious consequences and needed to be in a meeting. And if I'd have left, nobody would have been there. You know, it's like, yeah. you know, luckily my, my friend was there. Uh, but I, who knows? It could have been the guy could have pulled up in front and nobody was there. Lights off. Yeah. And, and again, it was like okay. And so I did. I did uh, uh, three in a row. And then, uh, and then you know, holiday schedule came in. And it was you know whatever band rehearsals changed and stuff. But I'm definitely going back now as long as I can, as long as we have the opportunity to do so. And it's just been great to reconnect again and kind of. Uh, just kind of remember why, you, you know, I, I get so much out of doing our podcast that, you know, I, 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 I'm talking about it, but it is different to share the stories, Yeah, share the stories with somebody where, you know, where we were, where I'm being reminded also, like somebody sharing their story with me and I, and I'm, you know, amazed. And also I get to see, I forgot about how important it is to be involved and see growth in others. Because it's been, you know, it's real, realistically, it was three years since my last meeting in person. I did a couple Zoom, but pretty much I hadn't done any. Mm. And um, and I'm 
pretty sure my last meetings was around the time that my sponsor killed himself. My first sponsor killed himself. So it had been a long time and there were a lot of, uh, you know, new guys in there now that have been sober for three years mm. and it was so fun to listen to them yeah. and to hear the, you know, that kind of growth and stuff. So that was really, that was really cool. And let's see what else has happened. Just been, uh, unbelievably, the generosity that's been shared with my at my work, my my coworkers and me is just unbelievable this year. And we had our annual board meeting, and the board president. We're getting a new board president. And our old board president kind of set up, you know, that it was a difficult year. And I was thinking about, you know, what I wanted to say. And again, I wanted to just talk about the staff and and then, you know, then get into other stuff. And and as soon as I thought about everybody talking about everybody, I started to choke up a little bit. And I'm like, oh, you know, and I'm just in the other room. So I, I'm like, OK, don't choke up. So I finally get called up. And there's not like a lot of people here. There might be like 15, 15 of our owners there. And I started with, you know, yeah, it was a real tough year. And, and you know, that we we. We had some hard times, but, and then I started talking about what our staff did and I started choking up right in the meeting. And it was just like, you know, I was like, okay, but it ended up, I'm, I'm so happy I was myself. Cause that's, that's who I am. Yeah. So many people appreciated it. Cause then after that, I followed it up with information, 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 information. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. But I started with humanity and it felt it just it felt right i did not feel i i have a tendency to sometimes feel shame after moments like that anytime where i even like sometimes uh you know just speaking at meetings in front of people and sharing my story it's not it's a weird it's not actually that i'm i i'm ashamed of it's the it's the being up there and and the vulnerability and you know imposter syndrome and all that kind of stuff like that <laughs> and i felt none of that after afterwards because it's i feel i mean how great is that i can be at work and be absolutely myself with everybody yeah. where is that little hound he suddenly feels he needs to contribute i bet there's a ball somewhere <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah and he's I, on and, your left corner by the way is he he's from my other side oh Oh, I bet a ball went underneath the, where the shoes are over there. I'll have to, I'll have to uh, uh, go go grab that when when I pass on. So I, the the new year, I finally had my first review at work since we changed everything because we never got around to them last year. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, it, right. We, way too busy, and so full whole year, and I was the last person to get my review done, and it's it was it was yesterday or day before yesterday, and and. Uh, and to be honest, like I, there was nothing to be nervous about because there is no standard for what we've done. You know, we had a facilities manager and a general manager leave and we had to take over and we had a facilities manager that refused to share everything with us. Hmm. So we had to figure it out for ourselves. Mm -hmm. And then we had to do it as a team basically independently without because we have no direct supervision it's just amongst ourselves and i'm like and we've pulled it off and we've done it and we've all gotten you know better at our jobs and we love going to work i was like what standard do you have for that if if it if that ain't fours and fives i don't know what is right <laughs> yeah and it, it right. Was, and everybody got raises awesome. and i was so happy not so much for myself but for my coworkers because we went a decade with nothing except lip service. And every year, things get more expensive. So the health insurance costs more. So every year, our check is actually smaller. Right. Every year. And now that it's been nothing but increases for the last two years. And we're getting our butts kicked financially. Like, the property is falling apart. We are so over budget in every category. And they still said, we want... You know, we want not only them to get raises, but that they it exceeds the uh, inflation rate. Oh, wow. And wow. That was just so generous. They could have given us whatever the average inflation rate is for the year and everyone would have been happy. But they said, no, we want to go above and beyond that. Yeah. And it's it's been a great, uh, just a tremendous end of the year 
you know, health stuff aside. <laughs> <laughs> but feeling mm-hmm. it, I, I've the last two months have been really uh, kind of confusing for me, knowing what I want to do, where I want to spend my time. And I had a lot of days where I just felt like doing nothing. So many days. I had more days when I got home from work and I just did nothing uh, because I just had nothing left. And I was, I wasn't working on the, you know, the things I love to do. I wasn't, you know, whatever I'm watching, you know, movies and, you know, doing podcasts with, you know, moving the needle. We did a couple and, you know, I, I did some things, played a bunch of video games, but I wasn't like playing my guitar, doing anything musically really. And the, this last week, it's all like, it's kind of come back to me. You know, I'm feeling, I'm feeling passionate again. And as a matter of fact, I, I found, I have some songs. I have a song that I started over 20 years ago. It's never been finished. And I finished it this week awesome. and it felt so good. And it just, rem- that's amazing. It really was. It's like, I have a, I had a recording of it. So I know what it's supposed to sound like. And I've played it, you know, like 10 years ago, I found the recording of it and, and I was like, okay, what is this? And I, but I never actually sat down and said, and my, my bandmates encouraged me. They're like, Hey, what are you playing right now? I'm like, Oh, it's an old song. They're like, you should, you know, bring that in. And so I, I, I found the recording and I sat down and I'm like, I had no idea what I was playing on this song at all. Like mm. I, I'm, I could figure out the notes, but I couldn't figure out what, how I was playing it. And I clearly wasn't, it wasn't finished. It was not quite right. And, and I finally puzzled it out. I, I figured it all out. And then even then it was like, I'm like, man, something's missing. Something's missing. And then the other night I was, you know, it was like midnight and I just picked up my guitar. I was like, I, I have to find this. And I found it and it felt great. That's what I did today is I, I did, um, I finished the song, uh, for the most part. And I just recorded it quick on my phone just so I, you know, I remember what I, what I was doing. And and then I also went up to uh, my bank and uh, started the application to get a, a home equity line again, a line of credit and for the house and just to deal with some financial stuff. And also to like we have so much equity in our homes right now. It's just dumb. Like it's just dumb. Hmm. And so I will get as much as they will give me. You know, I, yeah. if I don't use it, I don't use it. Mm-hmm. But that it's mm-hmm. there. You know, because like I know next year I'm gonna need it. I know I'm gonna need a new furnace. I know I'm gonna need a um, a new water heater. And you know, one of the things I, I want to do is become more financially not not necessarily about calling it financial responsibility, but just being being smart and aware of that that quit doing everything because like suddenly you have to. Right. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Right? These are predictable things. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, and to be active in those things, because why have more stressors if I don't need them? And so um, started that process and and it was kind of funny because I was it's we're Idaho's a community property state, uh, it, which is really unusual for a Republican state. There's only like 11 or 12 states that are community property. And I, I had no idea about that. But that was like one day I was like, OK, that means all the equity that that has been earned in this house since Sharon and I got married is half hers. Mm. Right? Yeah. There's no question about it. Like none. So there's no reason that she can't tap into it. There's no reason she couldn't be on the title. Plus it's going to make, it would make things as far as like, you, you know, if something happened to me a lot easier, if yeah. she's on the title. And, yeah. and so uh, I'm starting in that process too. Of of just you know kind of kind of straightening stuff out and then that brings me to will that's my my thing I have to do is I tore my will up last year because it was basically useless mm. and uh, and wasn't accurate and it's like I need to write a new one and that is the one thing I'm committing myself to right now is is I need to get this done and it's mainly because the amount of stuff that I have <laughs> and it's you know this it's stuff that I use but still it's stuff. And I wouldn't blame Sharon for just pulling up a dumpster and throwing all in. <laughs> right? Clear instructions. Yep. Right. Like that commercial for, I forgot what company it is, but they're like, just point. You know, like you, you they come yeah. up with like a, a a trailer to haul away your stuff. And it's like, just point and we'll make it go away, basically. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. Yeah. That's my, that's. If if I'm gonna have any sort of a, a a a New Year's Eve commitment is to is to get that done before 
I start, you know, going on vacations again and getting in airplanes. <laughs> yeah. Probably a strong good move. Choice. Yeah. Choice. Mm. yeah. All in all, feeling, you know, feeling pretty good compared to, you know, if we if we talked in December, you know, there were there were some weeks that the, it just wasn't good. I mean, it just wasn't good. You know, and so everything's kind of worked out for a reason. And I, I'm just I'm just I'm just going with it right now. Mm. It's, you know, if I, I'm just going to. You know, we're we're not even at this the 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 you know part of our program here, but like to me, if I'm gonna pick a power word right now, it's just flow. Nice. And you know, Hanno, I'm sure you feel it, but I just want to vocalize it. I'm incredibly proud of you for all that you have done, especially this last few months, being able to stand up in front of people and be emotionally vulnerable to stand up for yourself in a situation to where it's very, very easy and expected to just kind of roll yeah. over and just say whatever happens. Yep. I mean, you have stood up for yourself. You've held yourself with confidence. You have defended who you want to be and have owned who you are. It's incredible. Not- Absolutely incredible. So be very proud of yourself. I am proud of you. Okay. For all that you have yeah. done here. Not to mention, you've also stood up for your coworkers. You've advocated mm, for your coworkers. You've, you know, took took a leadership role, even though, you know, you guys were doing things together. But there was a lot of the things you took on to really kind of help make the plans happen. And you know, you've really dealt with yes. quite a bit this year with that, you know, with those kind of things. And then that that leak. I mean, man. That whole that was a mess. It's a hell of a leak. Yeah. So it, yeah, and it's still there. And it's, it's still waiting. there. Jeez. Oh boy. We're just, like, we're just crossed fingers. You should see the the pipe when it finally arrived. Mm. This stuff is amazing. So it's it's four inches pipe on the inside. Uh, you know, it's a uh, it's a PEX pipe, so it's a polyethylene pipe or whatever it is. But then it has insulation already around it, which is a closed cell foam. And then there's another layer. It's called HDPE, basically. But it's a like a, think of a hard shell mm. at six inches. And each one of these pipe rolls, so it's 160 feet. Each one of these pipe rolls weighs. Almost six hundred pounds. Oh man! Wow. Oh it, wow. Uh, yeah, and when I wasn't there when it arrived, and so we have a forklift, so we got it in with the forklift, and then when I got there on Monday, I was looking at the stuff, and 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 what I love the company, they they basically right right there on their pipe, they put all the pressures and temperatures and all the stuff, and they give you PDFs to learn everything about installing it. All the, I mean, they're wide open about it, which is awesome. Good, yeah. And I'm reading about how it needs to be stored. It says, do not lay flat. And I was like, and that's what it was laying flat. Right. Oh. And I'm like, we need to get, we can't, we can't go straight. You know, we, we, we can't go vertical with it mm. because we just don't have enough room for the rolls. The rolls, <laughs> right. They can be compacted, but they'd expand it a little bit. So I'm like, well, let's let's rope it up. Because if you think about it, you've got uh, 600 pounds of pipe, and there's one pipe at the bottom that ends up having all the weight on it. Oh, okay. right. So you have it so it's distributed. Yeah, right. So mm-hmm. we're down there, like two of us tried to lift one of the rolls, and it was like, <laughs> like wow. So it was like four of us <laughs> and our forklift and a rope. It was pretty cool. Wow. But the best part was like bringing our, our board, new board members down there to show them it and all this stuff. And, you know, and then we got a pallet that felt like nothing. It's, it's pretty, pretty much nothing. And the pallet alone was probably $20,000 worth of fittings. I'm like, Jeez. Jeez. Wow. <laughs> it's, oh, wow. It's, it's nuts. This whole thing is, is a little, is a little out there, but if, if we can make it, if we can make it to warm weather, this whole thing is going to be a lot easier, and everyone's just crossing their fingers. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so for your guys this Seriously, thing, for sure. Yeah, yeah. But uh, every, everyone's, you know, it's it's fun to go to work. We we had one, we had uh, what was great was our housekeeping staff. We had one employee that was just kind of not cutting it, and one of my mm-hmm. one of my facilities team was also kind of not cutting it and i decided i wasn't gonna i wasn't gonna go talk to the gm about it. i was gonna handle it i'm like i want to handle it ourselves and so i talked to him and both of these both of these employees are the type that want to deflect and instantly start pointing fingers at others mm-hmm. and he first thing he did is he wanted to point fingers at others and i was just like zip i'm like 
I'm not having a conversation with you about somebody else. Yeah. I'm having a conversation with you about you. And I'm not going to go talk to the general manager about this. I said, I, and I, and I just made it, I was like, you got to do better, man. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, right? that's it. Yeah. You just got to do better. I want you to do better. I want, you know, it's like, forget about whatever. And sure enough, he was, you know, he was frustrated. He starts talking to everybody else. And luckily everyone else was the same way. You know what? Don't worry about him. Worry about yourself. Yeah. And everyone just said, worry about yourself. Mm-hmm. And this other staff member didn't go that way. You know, and, and like my facilities team member within a couple days, you could just tell. It's like, hi, thank you for being present again. You know, it's like you're only you're going to be who he is, but it's like at least at least be present, at least make us think that you want to be here. And uh, the yeah. other member didn't. And we fired her a week before Christmas. Oh, wow. Which Ooh, a, harsh. is a big deal when you have a ton of people in town and they want housekeeping. Yeah. Right. You only have two full time housekeepers and you're getting rid of one of them. And then there's just the whole angle of Christmas. And what I loved is our, my, um, you know, coworkers who are, who managed that department said, you know, I'm not letting a holiday be held hostage over us for a bad employee. Mm -hmm. And that's what she's become is a bad employee. And they went, crink, get out of here. Wow. And it, 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 it's rough, but it also, there's something about, like the the like how much support there was it was it was based off of facts it was based off of you know of of write-ups and behaviors and clear messages of behaviors and it reminded me that we don't need to have toxicity in our lives right yeah absolutely we don't need it yeah you know and my one thing that i'm not proud of is uh about a week ago i had a, a friend over and uh, this person decided to be sorry, be negative about somebody else in front of me, mm. and I just I'm like, nope, we're not doing this. Now I handled it really poorly, meaning that I raised my voice, but I'm and and I apologized for that afterwards. But I realized. I don't want your toxicity mm-hmm. in my house. And I told her to leave. Yeah. Wow. Good and for I, you. And, and, and the, 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 the main thing about it for me was this, this is a choice. You had a choice with what you wanted to say next. You chose to talk some smack about somebody who isn't here to defend themselves about a topic that I know nothing about that I did not solicit it. That was your choice. My choice is I don't need to hear it. Right. Now I made a bad choice in how I handled it (laughs) and I apologized for it. Yeah. And I've heard nothing. I've heard no apology back, but that's not that, but the apology wasn't. Doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah. I needed what you're proud of and that's what matters. Yeah. And, and, and I needed to apologize because I, I, I really do wish I handled it differently. I could have mm-hmm. I could have made my point much calmer and 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 been a lot more reasonable and plus I'll tell you it would have been even more it would have had way more impact if I would have been really calm through the entire thing. <laughs> yeah, so, probably. This is true. <laughs> like could have even come across as better. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's you know a lot of this people you don't, true. don't think about that that it's like we get, you know, like sometimes you just got to get something off your chest, but other times it's like mm-hmm. When you talk like that, it's like really what you're telling the person you're talking to is I'm a person who talks about others behind their backs. Oh, so yeah. it's like, well, in my head, I'm always like, well, I, that tells me you're talking about me behind my back. Now, again, as we've the platitude of the what is it? What other people say when you're not around is none of your mm-hmm. business. Right. But that still tells you that they're doing it. And those aren't people that you typically yeah. want to be engaging with. Yeah. Yeah. yeah well, I the- found the best answer to that. Is if someone brings something to me like, oh, well, so and so said something about you, and they start going down that path, yep. where I always they get so pissed at me. But I always look at them like, you know what? They probably told you that in confidence, and uh, if they wanted me to know about it, they probably would have told me about it. 
Yep. So if you feel that someone says something that I need to know, I highly encourage you instead of bringing it to me, that you encourage them M, to exactly. bring it to me. Yep. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, they get all bent out of shape and pissed off about it. I'm like, well, I'm not going to tell you anything. I'm like, well, yeah. that's fine. Because that's yeah. kind of what they expected that, you to do was not right. tell me. Well, and you're, that's also kind of what you want is like, I don't want you bringing what? gossip to me. <laughs> like, that's kind of the point no. of me telling you. Yeah. Yep. We, we all have those moments where we need to vent about someone. Yeah. And we choose a person to vent to that we can we feel we can trust. But it, it is I mean, it's it's Heno reacted though. That is something ooh. most of us don't. A lot of us don't take into account is when we're like, I need to dump. A lot of people don't go, Hey, are you in a place that this is okay? Kind of a thing, or are you okay if I talk True. about you know you just bleh, and the other person's kind of like whoa you know like right and if right. it's something they're not comfortable hearing or don't want to be engaged in mm-hmm. you don't most of the time we don't give them the opportunity of uh, first refusal you know <laughs> we're just like here's all my stuff and you're like whoa hold on right. let me we just dump <laughs> yeah let me unbury myself for a second and then i'm gonna help you pack this and take it back outside because <laughs> i don't want it in here <laughs> so i <laughs> love it yeah exactly all right well, what do you guys got <laughs> well i um i uh no let's see i back all the way to you know where, where we're at here I'll go back to Christmas Eve because I can't think of where we recorded before that and what I said. So, um, the well, a little bit before that, you know, in my last meeting with the psychologist that was evaluating me for uh, ADHD, and um, he doesn't he he notices that I, I obviously have some issue with like you know if so, like I said when someone gives like a whole paragraph of a a story and then if I'm supposed to repeat it, I have a very difficult time doing it. So there is some I forgot what he called it. It's detailed something. I see again, I can't remember. But uh um you know, so he wanted me to talk to my doctor about cuz he thinks it's from diabetes more. Because the timing of when things seem to get worse for me or around the times I was diagnosed with diabetes. And this is a weird spot because it's possible. I've talked with a couple of my like Twitter friends or online friends that are doctors, and I've asked them if this is something that's possible. Is can diabetes cause these things? And they absolutely can. And diabetes actually can trigger uh, migraines, which could explain why my migraines have gotten worse over the years because I've had diabetes. Now. As always on here, I'm not a doctor, trained professional, whatever. So, you know, grain of salt, all of this, even though, you know, I've talked with doctors and I looked it up, you know, also and read into it and stuff. But talk to your doctor if you have any of these concerns. <laughs> um, but I, I've i seen so much about the paralyzing or the inactive ADHD that I I'm in a weird place because I've gone to a guy that's, you know, an expert in this and I strongly disagree with him. I don't think he was really looking for inactive ADHD in me. I think he was looking more for the active ADHD, which I don't have. I, I, I have very few of those symptoms. Most of my symptoms are in the like executive dysfunction. I can't start things, but after talking with my therapist, you know, she, she very much feels that I'm on the autistic spectrum. Um, and so now I've got an appointment with him in a few weeks and hopefully we're going to talk about that. Um, I brought it up, but I, I didn't really get a response from him. So if I don't get a response this time, then I'll talk to them again and be like, can you refer me to someone else who will do this? Because I don't, you know, and I've been, like I've said, I've been in like Reddit, subreddits about autism and stuff and the things people talk about so much of it and i'm like this explains so much of my behavior since i was a little kid and these aren't oh this just came on a few years ago and same with the adhd stuff it only got worse as time's gone on but a lot of it was there when i was a kid um the stuff that feels more like autism 
is has been there since I was a little kid. Um, you know, the, my sensitivities to clothes and foods and noise and a whole lot of things. Um, but that's just the first things that pop into my head. I've I've gone over this before on here, but um, so it's one of those weird situations where if I go to him and say he tests me for this, and if he comes back and goes, I don't really think you are, it's a weird spot, right? Like, where does that lead me? When I've read so much from people who have been, you know, like experts on, on autism, uh, different psychologists and psychiatrists that I've seen on Twitter and different stuff, and they post all this stuff, and I'm like, yes, yes, finally. You know, like, that explains why I do A, B, or C. And then if you have somebody tell you you don't have that, that's a weird kind of, um, oh, what's the word for it? Like a purgatory almost to be in. Because on one hand, you know, it's like, we're, you know, you go, well, that's an, they're an expert and they know better than me and blah, blah, blah. But then when you go and you read this stuff and you go, but do they? And I'm not normally one to really challenge doctors. I've never been like I challenge them if I don't like I don't think you know they're doing their job basically but when it comes to them being the expert in the room I've never been one to truly challenge doctors it's a very weird place and weird feeling for me because it's like I've talked with different people that I know that are in the field and they've been like yeah it wouldn't shock me if you're neurodivergent like if you're on the spectrum, like you're very much like other people I know who do those same things, um, you know. And like I said, for the first time in my life, I feel more like these are my people, right? Like with depression, I'd read stuff online with people describing their depression. And I'm like, I have a lot of this, but there's also some of this stuff that doesn't quite I, – I don't identify with. And same with anxiety, and I honestly think a lot of my anxiety, like, right, like when I'm out, the reason I get anxiety when I'm in crowds isn't probably anxiety itself. It's overstimulation. So much noise I can't handle. And that just, you know, again, Heno, you saw it firsthand. Like you think about what was going on there. What was the real triggering factor in that to me was it was the noise. It was, we went in that bar and it was just so many different things at one time. And I was just like this, no, you know, and immediately. And I, so the more I've read about how people, how basically you can have depression and anxiety, but still it can kind of be caused by things from autism or, you know, ADHD. Again, I'm not saying I am just though they can cause these things. It's like, well, maybe the reason I couldn't find the root cause for years and years when I was looking at my childhood or I was looking at this or this in my life, different factors, was I just wasn't looking right at something that's like, hey, this could have been something. This could have just been how you were born. And the reason you can't find a root cause is because it's always been there. And that's pretty much how I've been feeling, you know, the more I read into this stuff. But I also, you know, me being who I am, also know that, you know, a lot of people, when you start reading stuff on the internet, what you become is n just knowledgeable enough to be dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> so well, I do have a question for you. Okay. I'm sorry to interrupt you. No, it's fine. Uh, is there any medicine for, um, for being on the spectrum? Or is it just behavioral? That's the interesting part is I don't think there really is. I think a lot of it is more learning uh coping mechanisms and stuff so my my position to you is why do i need the diagnosis so bad uh-huh yeah why not just if you truly feel well first off folks for the populace listening in if you don't feel that it's a good diagnosis mm. or if you have any questions any concerns whatsoever that you do not feel are being answered by your given doctor, mm -hmm. please, please, please seek a second opinion. Yeah. By, the, by the way, said, let me rephrase really quickly. I don't think yes. that this guy misdiagnosed me. I think, right. no, no, no. What I think it is, is a, an incomplete diagnosis because mm -hmm. I don't feel like he's necessarily, I don't think he's seen the whole picture that I want him to see. 
and I can't seem to get him to see it. Well, either the way. Yeah. If you don't feel that you if you are not on the same page, we'll rephrase it. If you're not on the same page as your doctor and you don't feel you can get on the same page with your doctor, mm. then please seek a second opinion or seek yeah. someone else out. Well, because it's not that they're a bad doctor, it's not that you're a bad patient. It's a bad fit. Well, this so is so please make sure you do that. This is something I that I, kind of why I wanted to talk about this because you know a lot of times we've talked about you know go to the doctor and do the you know get the estimate mm-hmm. and all this stuff, but we've never really talked that many times about like what happens when you don't you don't agree. And again, this mm-hmm. isn't me like looking at science going oh, no, you know, like I'm not you right, know, nothing right. like that. This is simply a me going. Well, the things you're saying, I don't show. I know I do. You mm-hmm. just don't see them because I'm so good at masking them. You know, and we mm. talked about masking, I believe, the last time we recorded, if I'm not mistaken. Um, mm-hmm. And and that not just an autistic situation, but to people with depression mask, alcoholics mask, gambling addicts mask, everybody who has these kind of issues, we all mask because we don't want people to see the true us. Or we're putting on a face so that other people aren't as concerned about us or, or whatever. So we fit in, basically. So, yeah, that's, I, that is something I've wrestled with, though, Jen, going back to the why do I need the diagnosis, right? Like, yeah. and, and my therapist actually asked me that, too. And actually, I was supposed to meet with her yesterday, but I woke up with such a bad migraine that mm-hmm. I just, I couldn't do anything except take my medicine and go back to sleep. I, I mean, I slept until 9 p.m. last night. That's when mm. I that's when I got up. My head hurt so bad all day. So, um, you know, um, what what I can say is that, you know, the guy did recommend that what I should do is talk to my doctor about the diabetic diabetes thing. There may be a medicine that I'm on for, like, my blood pressure that they can switch out for. There's one that can help people with ADHD, which I'm not real sure I want to screw around with medicines like that um, because I don't – I don't know. Those medicines are always weird to me. I'm on enough. So I, I want to go the other way with a lot of these medicines. I would like to go off of medicines. So um, with what I've been trying to do is eat better. And I am, you know, it's hard to exercise when I don't make enough money to afford a gym. And I don't so much have much room to exercise at home. And it's too dang cold to be outside. I'm not trying to walk outside when it's like 20 degrees. <laughs> So, um, it's a little warmer right now, but I, I, you know, would like to figure, I do have an exercise bike, so I, I just need to clean it off and try to at least get on that a few times a week or whatever, just for whatever it offers me, the movement, you know, um, to see, because he might be right. I, I'm not saying he's wrong. He might be right. Maybe if I improve my, um, uh, my blood sugar situation, maybe it'll help, you know, I mean, it can't hurt. The things that he's recommending are good for me anyway, <laughs> you know, to eat better and get some movement in my life. Those are both really good things that I do need to do anyway. So, you know, I'm not fighting that. As far as the diagnosis goes, I think a lot of it comes to my perfectionism. I have to have, I have to have a solution. I have to have the the completion. Um, otherwise, it drives me crazy. So that's where it comes down to. As far as the logic side of it, it's so weird. There's times where I can seriously take a step back and I really can see like the neurosis almost or the, the behavior and the logic, you know, and this is one of those times where I know logically I don't need the diagnosis. I can be part of these groups and identify with people and go, Hey, what do you do in this scenario? And listen and read what people do and try to apply that to myself and see if it helps. Um, you know, but, but the completionist and, or completionist and perfectionist part of me is like, dude, you're not going to sleep unless you know, <laughs> like <laughs> the final answer. Like, and how can he say no when you're like, dude, I have this, 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 you know? <laughs> so it, it's a very weird spot for me. Like I said, because I don't typically, mm-hmm. I, I've always been pretty like, okay, you're the doctor, you know, what's best. And you know, it's very rare that I've been like, I don't know, that doesn't, that doesn't seem right. There have been a few times where that's happened. Usually it's not me. It's usually when someone else tells me something about them. And I'm like, that sounds really weird. Are you sure? Like, you might want to get it, you know. So, I don't know. 
Um, but on, uh, on Christmas Eve, I went to my sister's and, uh, you know, we had like 20 people there and, uh, I, boy, I t- you talk about like the overstimulation situation is that, you know, when you have 20 people in a small ish space, her house isn't small, but where everybody is, is kind of crammed together. There's no rest sound wise. It's constant sounds, you know, normally I would just go outside for a few minutes, but it was negative 25 outside. I believe on Christmas Eve, <laughs> like wind chill factor. So I was like, why are you trying to stay outside? <laughs> Cause it's cold. And I, and so plan B would be, I, I usually maybe would go in the bathroom for a couple minutes. Well, there was kind of a constant train to the bathroom. <laughs> so I was like, well, that's pretty much out. And, I stopped, I stopped processing. I, I really felt myself disconnecting at different times. And, and I was like, you know, and, and afterwards I was looking at going, I should have asked my sister if I could have went into like her office or the one extra room she has or whatever. I just, Hey, can I go in there and just like shut the door for a few minutes? Like I just need to kind of get away from the sound for a few minutes. And I know she would have let me, you know, a hundred percent. And I just, I, I, my brain didn't go that far because it was it by the time I would have thought about that I think I was too far into fight or flight mm-hmm. and my brain the way it it flew at that point was like basically we're just gonna go daydream <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna shut down for a minute yeah. we'll be fine yeah we're just gonna fly around for a few minutes and you know you'll come back every once in a while if someone says something to you um but we had a good time it was just when we got home you know, my mom and I sat down and we were going to exchange our gifts and stuff. And I'm like, I just need a couple minutes and just quiet, you know. And after a little while of that, I was okay. You know, I just, because, you know, but again, the next day, I I just wanted to be left alone all day. I, I had such, what? such a hangover from the, it will not hangover, burnout is the, is the real word there. Burnout is the right word. Because I, I, I was so overstimulated for so long that I, my brain needed a full reset to, you know, before I was really ready to socialize or anything again. So, but it was good. You know, New Year's Eve, I just watched football at home and, you know, it, it can be kind of a tough night because it's, it was my parents' anniversary. So, you know, it can be kind of sad. And like I said, on Salty Language, we're still hitting uh, things that are like, this is the first this without Jim that, that my mom was with, you know? So it's like, we're getting close to, uh, you know, his birthdays, I think in a couple weeks. So, you know, it'll be his first birthday where he wasn't around and, you know, it's like, we're still hitting some of those firsts and, you know, those, those can be kind of tough to, you know, I didn't really want to, I didn't want to leave her alone on that or whatever. So, you know, but we just watched the football games that were on and got pizza and, you know, it was fine. We were both okay and it was good. You know, we had a couple moments where we talked about, you know, Jim and my dad. Because, like I said, that was my parents' anniversary. It was New Year's Eve. So, you know, it was a, it's always a little bittersweet. Not as much for me as I'm sure for her, you know. But mm-hmm. I just, it's just something I remember, of course. But um try and think here. Um, yeah, so that the other, I've, I've been really going through a real funk with, and I'm going to talk to my social worker to talk to my psychiatrist actually is I, I've seen a few things talking about antidepressants and, um, how for a lot of people, they're not as effective over time or whatever. And I was like, you know, I'm thinking that I'm going to talk to them about maybe trying to go off my antidepressant for a short time and just see how I feel. Um, for a couple reasons, one dangerous, dangerous, dangerous. I know you're getting your doctors involved, yes. but no, no, I have, I have good reason here. And, and the re- okay. the reason right. is twofold one, because I didn't realize how not effective effects or was for me until I was off of it. Then I was like, Oh, this okay. didn't do the good. I thought it did, which allowed me to mo- look for something else. But I, so I kind of want to see if the effectiveness of what I'm on now is still there. Um, and the other is I do have a lot better tools than I've had for a while. And I've been on this one for years now. 
So these are the exact, exact verbatim things that I have said yeah. when I've gone off my meds. Yeah, I know. That you both have yelled at me about. No, see, you've just gone off your meds, though. I'm talking about going to my doctor and weaning off correctly. <laughs> this is true. Yes. I will give you that. And, and I'm, I'm talking about where I still have them, like the prescription for it. And if I see that it's like, whoa, this was a bad idea, I can immediately go back on it. I have no problems going back on it. Saying. Like I, I'm not looking to necessarily go off of it. I just want to make sure that the medicine is still doing what it's supposed to do. And this is pretty standard procedure from what I've been told that like after a few years, some, a lot of these kind of lose their effect. So like I said, and I don't really feel like it's, I don't really feel like it's doing anything anymore. So, you know, and yeah, it could be possible I need an increase, but it also could be possible that it's just, not really doing anything. And again, this is something that kind of goes into the other talking, which is, you know, it can, stuff like autism and stuff can help explain why you're having, why a person has treatment resistant depression. So, mm -hmm. you know, that's why I said, I want to talk to everybody on all fronts and just get opinions. I'm not necessarily going to do it. I just want to talk to them and see what that person thinks. Um, and that, that makes sense. Yeah. I'm just, just saying, be careful. Oh, I know. I know. That's why I said I, I have no intention of just I'm just going to stop. I'm mm -hmm. not doing that at all because I learned my lesson on that when I didn't have a choice, you know, before. Because when, you know, my insurance was like, yeah, we're not paying for this anymore. And I'm like, uh. <laughs> right, right. I'm like, I don't have any money, so I guess I'm going off of this, um, which, by the way, don't ever do. People don't ever do that. Um, but that anyway, so. That's part of something I want to talk to them about, too, because I I'm, I'm kind of wondering, like I said, I, I don't feel it's weird. It doesn't feel like it's it's there like it was before, you know, so that's why I said I don't maybe I need an increase or maybe I need something different, you know, another medicine. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But um, and then the last thing I want to talk about was it was really weird um, last week. Tony and I didn't put a show up. And what? Yeah, because Tony got really sick over Christmas, and he was coughing like crazy, so he couldn't really record. And yeah. the like, we kind of were doing a day by day on it, and then by the time he was kind of like, "Man, I don't know about this week," and I was like, "Who?" Because I had seen that Heno had like multiple gigs coming up, and I'm like, ah, "I don't really think Heno's going to be in a place to do this," and. Honestly, I was kind of like, hey, you know, about doing it at a certain point, you know. So he was like, well, what do you think about us just not putting one up this week? And we didn't have anything in the bag that we could just throw out there like we've done in the past. And I was like, you know what? Yeah, let's just do that. And it was funny because look, we put up 400 or 593 episodes. Uh, you know, some have been shorter, some have been things we've done, whatever, but we've always put, even the week where I, I believe like we lost an episode, I put up something or Tony put up something that was like, Hey, basically we lost the episode cause my computer died and just ate mm -hmm. the episode. Um, so, you know, we have 594 or 93 episodes that we put up and it's like, that's a hell of a run you know, of putting something up almost every week, like maybe one or two, we didn't, but it was pretty much every week we put something out there. And I got to say, as much as I was proud of that streak, I'm also so relieved that it's broken. <laughs> yeah, not, not that I have any intention on us missing again, you know, we'll, we'll uh -huh. go right back to what we always did, but now it's not like, man, we had so many, in a, I mean, it, you know, the one thing that'll always eat at me is it's like, we almost got to 600. <laughs> you know almost got but it, it's interesting how the 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 perfectionist in me allowed us allowed me to go it's okay if we don't put one up this week finally and i was like that's a huge win because almost every week i'm like dude we got to do something like i i got to get heno or we got to figure out something to put up there you're like do we have any scraps in the you know in the can that we can glue together or you know something and this week i was just like you know what we're just going to take the last week of the year off 
you know <laughs> and that's all right and and i'm okay with that and then we came back monday and you know put a put a show up and you know he just got back on the horse basically but i was like you know uh, we did make a joke that i i told tony i t- thought about it way too late and i'm like well, what i should have done was w- i should have led the show off with like welcome to season two of salty language you know, after 593 episodes, that's our season one. <laughs> oh, gotcha. So, oh, that's funny. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I was really, really proud of the fact that even though it meant a lot to us that we really had that run for a long time, that we both were just kind of also like, this is OK. You know, like we, you know, you did good, kid. You know, it's like the the coach came out to take the ball. You know, it's like, hey, man, you gave us seven strong. I mean, you know, like. <laughs> So, yeah, I think that's it for me now that I've talked about it as long as I did. This is basically mostly a catch-up episode for anyone who's not already figured that out. Oh, no, we're going to be doing our words. Yeah, that too. Our words for the year. Well, um, yeah, it's been kind of crazy, but good crazy. Um, The month of December is um, very special to me. And the month of December is the month of reflection. And from my memory tree that I have, and for those who don't know what that is, that just means I've collected ornaments from people, events, things that have happened in my life. So that when I put up my tree, every ornament that I put up with, I have a memory and it brings me back to that moment. And it's very special to me. So I had my memory tree. I made my candy, which I've been doing for 30 years now, is what we figured out. Jeez. Um, I didn't realize yeah. it had been that long. Wow. Uh-huh. My grandmother's recipes, I've added to them over the years and added my own. And just every time I do it, I hear her voice, and it's very, very special. Nice. So it's just a lot of that type of stuff that, it just brings me back to my childhood, brings me back to where I've been. Um, in this year, I saw there's ornaments from my past relationships. Um, one's from when I was with Brian and one's from when I was with Dan. And I avoid putting them on my tree. Well, this year, I put some of them on my tree. And... I'm like, no, I'm not ignoring these pieces of my past. It's my memory tree. Mm -hmm. And there are some wonderful memories tied to these ornaments. So I'm putting them up. So I did. And uh, and it was very therapeutic. It was wonderful. I had the opportunity to decorate my apartment the way I wanted to. I didn't have anyone's opinion. Um, If I was over the top, it didn't matter because the hat is exactly what I wanted. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was what's most important. And that kind of underlines the entire year for me is really coming into my own of understanding what I want and accepting that what I want is enough. That there doesn't need to be anybody else's opinion of whether it's good enough, bad enough, over the top, not enough. What It doesn't matter. None of that matters. All that matters is it made me happy and it's what I liked. And it was just, it was that beautiful moment of just kind of capping off the crazy growth, just manic craziness that I had this entire year and so much change in my world. Um, It was just nice to kind of just cap it off with, you know what? No, I own this. I love my apartment. I loved my tree. I loved all my decorations. It was sad to take them down. But it was it was me. You and took them down already? Enough. I did. I'm almost there. I okay. took everything except my, I took the ornaments off my tree, and it's just sitting here. So I do need to put my tree in the box. I was just wondering, because I've seen so many people on social media, like, oh, it's so sad to take the tree down. I'm like, so don't. Like, I know. It's not like the government's going to crash it. through the window with a SWAT team if you don't take your trees down, you know? Like, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, maybe if they're real, you might want to get rid of them because, you know, they're going to be kind of squirrely yeah. at some point. But 
no and i thought about it but yeah. i'm like no it's it's time okay. it's it's the right time because that's kind of how i view <clears throat> the new year uh so december is my reflection and then new year's eve happens and new year's year eve is the rebirth into my new year and all of the excitement and wonderful things and you know, all the craziness that's going to happen in 23. So putting my Christmas decorations away is very similar to kind of just packing some of my, um, my traditions, my, you know, my past, packing that up a bit, Mm. putting that away and making room for the new stuff. So it is kind of therapeutic in its own right. And when you think about it, I guess, Mm -hmm. but, uh, but yeah, it was, it's been, it was kind of crazy, but good. And then my brother came to visit. Um, my brother lives in Utah, for those that haven't heard um, the podcast before. And this is the first time he's been back in about a year. And uh, he split his time between my apartment and my mom's house. Um, and it was so amazing having him here. Because my brother and I have always been, we are completely different like i don't even know if you could get much more different than my brother yeah you're you're pretty different from each other yeah 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 it, but yet it's this amazing connection that we have mm-hmm. the sibling connection i guess that is just it's always been so strong between the two of us and he came and stayed with me and i actually had um I guess it would would I guess it would be like mellowed over the course of the year because I haven't really seen him and stuff and we still can't stay in contact and kept caught up with each other but um, we haven't had that core time together so it just didn't you know really raise its head until he he was staying at my apartment I have a one bedroom apartment by the way folks so I was sleeping on a air mattress while I gave him my bedroom because you know good host. Um, but having him here 24 seven, um, I forget how much we both are. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm a, I, I'm quite the firecracker and uh, I would say that he rivals me if not beats me hands down, um, in the firecracker category. Uh, we talk a lot, we do a lot, we're very over the top a lot (laughs) i actually went to the one point um my good friend v and i hang out a lot and i shot her a message and i said hanging out with my brother which she met and just you know feels the same way just an amazing guy um but (laughs) i shoot this message i'm like if i talk this much i do apologize (laughs) And please tell me that, that, you know, to calm down, to to stop. And she responded back with, well, we make it work. (laughs) I'm like, oh, you're so sweet. That's you telling me, oh, yeah, you talk a shit ton. Oh, excuse my language, folks. Jeez. (laughs) Yeah, boo. But, uh, yeah, she's very sweet about it, but (laughs) made it clear that, yeah, I'm a talker. But that's not a surprise to anyone listening to this podcast, I'm sure. Um, But yes, it was wonderful having him here. And then for the first time ever, we have my grandmother's Kolechki recipe. And Kolechki, for those who are not familiar, uh, otherwise known as Keithley's, Krishtiki, etc. It comes from... uh, it comes from the middle European countries. So we're talking like Slovakia, Hungary, uh, Poland, um, all of those good places. And they all uh, have a variation and they all have their own name for it. So if you've seen it out, it's um, it's a flaky pastry dough, not unlike like a croissant, um, maybe a little bit sweeter than a croissant. And then there's a jam filling or a nut filling. The uh, kolechkis are in the shape of stars, and the nut ones, the jam ones are stars, and the nut ones are, they call them crescents, or they bars. Mm. Um, so if you happen to see them out and around, I would recommend not buying them, because 98% of the time they're made with uh, lard or shortening, and yeah, they're not good. They need to be made with butter. 
So it was a two day affair. It's one day to make the dough and it's a whole nother day to cut it out in bacon and everything. Um, but this is the first time my brother and I have ever done it from scratch, start to finish. We both have taken part in making it various stages, but uh, we decided we were going to take it upon ourselves to make it from scratch. And it was quite the event. <laughs> mm. He's very logical and very measured. And um, I am much more loosey-goosey in when it comes to cooking, even baking. So that was interesting in and of itself. But, uh, but it was really cool because it was grandma's recipe. And uh, grandma got the recipe from her aunt who got it from a Poland um, fancy hotel pastisserie. So there she needed work. My great, great grandfather, they lived in Slovakia and he had daughters and there was no one to really help him make money. So one of the daughters ended up going out over across the border into Poland and ended up coming across this uh, hotel. And in the hotel, there was this great restaurant with a patisserie. So she talked to the restaurant, uh, the chef and said, you know, I, I want to help. I'm a really good cook. Let me, let me work. And he gave her to the pastry chef and said, here, well, she didn't read and she didn't write, which was typical for that time. Um, so she memorized all the recipes and ended up taking them back to Slovakia to her family, which she taught her sisters. Well, when they moved over into the Amer into America, they brought the recipe with them. And that has been passed down generation to generation. And that is the recipe that we made this Christmas. Hmm. So was it the best kolejki I've ever had? No. I, I got the flavors right. Yeah, you did. The, yeah, the shape. But, you know, that's more of a technique thing than it is anything. <laughs> so I'll give my myself a pass on the technique there. But, uh, yeah, it was just, it was really really thoughtful and poignant and um, made me greatly smile and absolutely heard my grandmother's voice mm. um, through the candy, through the kolachki, even through Christmas dinner, which was her recipe of chicken paprikash, which I was told very bluntly that I was not to deviate from grandma's recipe because <laughs> one year, and God help me, one year <laughs> I put too much garlic in, and I hear about it nonstop to this day. Too much garlic, none of sour cream. Mm -hmm. Hey, so um, I followed Grandma's recipe to the T, and I was told that this was probably the best chicken paprikash I have yet to make, and uh, it rivaled Grandma's. Okay. So yeah, so very proud, very proud of myself. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, it was just, it was, it was lovely. It was not, you know, it was small. I didn't have a lot of people, but, uh, as I have over the years and stuff, but, but the people I did have around me were very joyous and loved being around me. And I loved having them around me. And it was, it was just, it was what I wanted and needed from, from the season that I, I had, but, one thing that, because I've always had a very hallmark image of the holidays, um, you know, people sitting around the table carving the turkey and, you know, all of the kumbaya, for lack of a better term, hmm. um, <laughs> of everything. And as we all know, as we reach adulthood, we realize very quickly that there is no kumbaya, everyone getting along and sharing a glass of wine and all that stuff when it comes to family and life itself. It's messy. It's it's not what we see on TV. It's messy. It's difficult. It's different personalities being put together in a small space. And I've really tried to adapt over the years, especially the last five or ten years, to the reality of holidays versus my dream world of holidays. Mm. Well, this year for Christmas, I told my dad, it's just going to be my brother, my dad and I, and I would make him grandma's chicken paprikash. 
and he was going to come over to my apartment. Well, the last minute, I have an open table, which means that, especially at holidays, but all year round, if there's anyone, friend, friend of a friend, family member, whoever does not have a place to go, they have a place to go. Come to my house, I will feed you. Mm. And that's just my, my open door. It's like, you come to my house, I put a chair at my table, and I will feed you. And um, so it turned out that a couple people did not have a place to go for Christmas. I'm like, well, there's a given. You're coming to my house. And uh, I told my dad. My dad is, he's older and he's struggling a lot with anxiety and panic attacks and stuff. And so I messaged him and I let him know that there's going to be not just my brother, him and I, but there's going to be three other people all of which he's known for a very, very long time. He flipped his lid. Mm. He called me at 1130 at night and just had a heart attack about the whole thing. Mm. And I said, okay, dad, let's work. We'll work. I'll figure it out. Let me think on this. So I thought about it. I'm like, okay. So one part of me is like, suck it up, old man. This is the <laughs> way it's going to be. <laughs> yeah. Obviously we're not going that way. Right. And the other part of me is like, fine, stay home. I will just bring you the food whenever I feel like it. And that's a you know. And I thought about that, I'm like, no, no, that doesn't suit me. That's not what I want to do. And then it hit me. My brother's staying here. Dad can come over for coffee and a donut. So I messaged him. I'm like, hey, what would you like to have for breakfast? I will make you breakfast. He said, really, I just want a donut. And I said, I can do a donut. Come over early. We'll have donuts and coffee. We'll exchange our gifts. And then you can leave before everyone else arrives, if you so wish. He's like, perfect. Great. So he comes over uh, Christmas morning. And my brother and I sit down and we're talking and stuff. And in the back of this cookbook, my cousin put together of all my grandmother's recipes. There's an interview that my cousin did with my grandmother. And asked her a bunch of questions and then uh, typed it all out. Mm -hmm. So I looked at my dad and my brother. I'm like, well, this is what I want to do. I want us to go through some of these questions and hear grandma's answers and uh, and kind of connect back. And so they were agreeable and stuff. So we went through and we read some of the questions. And my dad's like, you know, I just read this not too long ago. I said, I didn't. He's like, yeah. He's like, I got out grandma's cookbook. and. I read through her answers. I said, oh, good to know. So we started talking and we talked about grandma and we reflections and stuff. And he was telling us stories about when he grew up and where uh, grandma was um, not 100% truthful in some of her answers <laughs> <laughs> and stuff. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, that's interesting. So that was fun. And we got this really great chance to just kind of look back and reflect upon family and share family stories, learn something new that we didn't know and stuff. And it was beautiful. It was perfect. And then people came over and we had an amazing dinner, uh, friends and family. And it was just, it didn't need to be a Hallmark movie picture. Mm -hmm. It had to be my Hallmark movie. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was perfect. I couldn't have asked for a more perfect Christmas. It was absolutely perfect. And, you know, it just re-underlines in bold print, in italic, the fact that your life is yours. And what you choose to see is up to you. You know, your perspective is yours to choose. And could I take my dad not attending my Christmas dinner as an absolute insult? 100%. I could absolutely see that happening. And, you know, and honestly, maybe other years it would have. Yeah. But this year it didn't. This year it just kicked home. I'm like, you know what? I don't want him here playing a role in being miserable. Yeah. I think you found a I, really good compromise. Yeah, I want him to be him. Yeah. That's what I love is him being him. Right. So I think it, it worked out 
the exact way it was supposed to work out. And a hundred percent because I didn't, I, I let loose of the reins. Mm -hmm. I didn't have to be in control. Yeah. You know, things work them way out, you know? And then, um, for new year's (laughs) random new year's, um, new year's, I decided with my first new year's single. So I figured I, I wanted to do something. So originally I reached out to V and we were going to go to a private party at the mommy brewing company. Um, but that kind of fell through. So then I was talking with Jay and she said that, um, that she was going to do something with her friends and she invited me along and I'm like, Oh, that'd be fun. A decades party. Um, not too far from us. So I'm, you know, got my outfit ready. Of course, eighties. I mean, there is no other decade decade for me. Hmm. Um, so you mean <laughs> you mean eighteen eighties, of course. Of course, yeah. <laughs> um, but unfortunately, you know, life did happen, and uh, and and she needed to stay closer to home. So, which hundred percent respect, and obviously, my heart's with her. Um, and so I find myself on New Year's Eve. And I'm on my dating sites, you know, just goofing around and talking with this guy. And he has no plans on New Year's Eve. He's going to sit at home and watch, you know, football. And I'm like, well, I don't really have anything going on. So you want to go grab a drink? And he's like, tonight? I'm like, why not? I'm like, oh. Hmm. So we ended up going out and grabbing a drink, which turned into like three. Um, and we watched the, the Michigan game. We watched the Ohio State game. And had an absolute last when we woke up that morning we didn't even know each other but yet here we are on new year's eve ringing in the new year together um so i'm like you know what this has got to be a good sign for 2023 (laughs) it's just the randomness and going with the flow and just seeing where things take me and trying not to get too far ahead of myself which I think that has always been a big thing for me is I like to put the cart way before the horses. And, uh, and this year I'm going to really try to, to rein that back in and just say, you know what? Today's good. That's enough. So, so, all right. With all that long windedness, there we go. Well, actually something you said reminded me of one more thing. I I forgot when I was talking and, uh, Going back to like my issues with perfectionism, I thought this was a real good thing to share here, which was at my sister's, she at one point sets down like a, a gift card in front of me and I'm I'm thinking it's from her. And then I look around mm-hmm. and she's handing one to each of my siblings and then to my mom and she has one for herself. And I'm like, the heck? And I look on the back and I'm like, this isn't her writing. And she's like, yeah, these were in my mailbox. She's like, each one has our name on them. And she's like, I have no idea who they're from. And wow. I'm, I'm like, really? Cause, and then I'm immediately, you know, because my brain, you just put a puzzle in front of me. So my brain goes, well, we have to figure this out. <laughs> and I'm sitting there and I'm looking at the handwriting and I'm like, this is not handwriting I know. It's none of my siblings. But, of course, you know, they could have had a coworker or a friend or somebody mm-hmm. fill something out. But I'm like – Going through different stuff, like, well, why would Chrissy do that if, you know, why would she give herself one when in the past mm-hmm. she's given us gifts and she just gives us the gifts? You know, she doesn't try to make it, like, secret or anything. And I'm like, so I doubt it's from, you know, so I'm going through different people it could be. And uh, and then I'm finally, I'm sitting there and I'm like, dude, you've got to let this go. Whoever did this didn't want you to know who it was that gave it or they would have put from so-and-so or whatever, you know, and I've got mm-hmm. a couple, I, I mean, of course I have a couple guesses, but it's one of those to where it was one of the hardest things for me to do to like my brains, like, you know, rubbing its hand together, go, Ooh, a mystery, you know? <laughs> and, and I'm like, no down boy down, you know, cause it's, <laughs> It, like I said, it's one of those moments to where it's like it isn't important who or they would have said. Like what's important is just the gratitude of it. Just to be – and this actually – this leads me into more of what I wanted to get to, which was – I talked about this a little bit on Salty Language, which was something that I – once again, like through Christmas, you know, I I just was shown such 
kindness from people via gifts that they gave or whatever. And it just, this has really been a year where I'm not sure that in the last, it, in the last year or two, I can't really think of a time probably since senior year of high school type t- time or junior year of high school that I've felt a swell of self-worth. And mm. I think a lot of people, and I don't mean because I got gifts. I What I mean is that gifts were the love language of those who cared about me, you know, that they showed me like, Hey, you're important to us. And not just in that, but just the conversations I've had with people this year and just some of the, I mean, really deep conversations with some people and, and just different stuff and just really been shown how much I matter to people. And I think, I think for the first time in a long, long time, I'm buying in a little bit, you know, and that's not, I mean, you yeah. both have known me quite a while now. That's not something I'm good at. <laughs> it's not one of my strengths. Oh, yeah. As much as like on salty language, I'll come, uh, you know, I act like I'm, you know, all confident and ego guy. I'm for sure not. I, that's never, <laughs> never really been me. Um, so it, it's, you know, I, anyone listening, if you're one of the ones involved in that, I want to say thank you because it's been really helpful for me that I think this Christmas was one of the best Christmases I've had in a little while because of that, because I wasn't, I wasn't so focused on the, 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 the big, whatever it was, you know, spending time with my family, talking with friends, different stuff, like really, really feeling gratitude coming through the end of the year, you know? And before we get to our power words, I want to ask you guys the question that I was the question of the week for salty language, which was, what do you feel? And it doesn't have to be the best thing that happened to you this past year, but what's something really good that happened to you or the best thing, if you do have a best thing. Mm. I just basically gave mine, which was, I was essentially given the gift of, I, I don't know. I, I it feel like somebody, I feel like my friends op- helped me open the door to self-worth. Finally. They've been trying for years. <laughs> and I finally was like, hey, what's that door over there? <laughs> Honestly, for me, the best thing that's ever ha- that happened to me this year was uh, it was when I realized, again, kind of like what you said, Brian, it was when I realized my, my independence, my self-worth. Yeah. Um, I remember, I remember it so vividly. Um, I was dating a guy at the time, very, very nice man. And I completely broke down one morning and, uh, I got to work and I was just so broken and I called him up. And I told him, he's like, what's wrong? And I told him, I'm like, I am worse off than I was when I left college. I said, I have no idea what I'm doing. I have (laughs) no idea. I have a roof over my head, but God knows if I'm going to be able to keep it over my head. I said, you know, I am so beyond just everything is so overwhelming. And I, I cannot even see straight let alone how I'm going to get out of this. And he told me very bluntly, he's like, you already are. And I stopped and he's like, you already are. He's like, why are you talking about? I will get out of this. I will do this. Cause you're doing it. Mm -hmm. You're putting one foot in front of the other. You got up, you went to work. You're having conversations you need to have. You have the roof over your head that you have for a reason. Mm -hmm. He's like, you're already doing it. You're just not seeing it. That makes sense, right? Because you're so deep in that, that just depression basically that, or, or whatever you want to call it, that funk. Yeah. And it just, it was that moment that just kind of woke me up to the idea that, you know what? 
this is <clears throat> my world. This is my life. Mm -hmm. This is the reality. I've been living in a <clears throat> dream state for so many years. And it just, it woke me up. And now I can honestly say, looking back on it, and I hate verbalizing it because I know so many people will be hurt by it, but I was near suicidal in April and May yeah. this year. Right. I really was. I was, I didn't see a point. Yeah. I was so far deep in everything that I just didn't see the point in moving forward because it was so much work and so daunting in front of me. And I couldn't even verbalize it. It was so daunting. So it was so much easier just to say, I'm okay. I'm doing good because I didn't even have the words for how dark and deep I was. Right. And nobody knew because I didn't tell them. Yeah. And when that kind of culminated in that moment and I really broke and I finally opened up to someone and thank goodness they were kind. Right yeah. And thank goodness yes. they were kind that they didn't give you a horrible yes. answer, you know, that might have, yeah. I'm not saying they'd be responsible, but you know what I mean? There were, well, that, no, that exactly. could, someone was, could tip you the was, wrong way though. Yeah. It was just that one word, that one yeah. sentence, that one it's like you're doing it yeah and it all became clear i'm like wait a minute <laughs> i am <laughs> so crazy though when you think about it right like someone literally just was like you're like i don't know how i'm gonna open this door and they're like you just grab the handle and open it it's, <laughs> like, it's like it's just you know what i mean it's like they're like durr you know <laughs> and you're like oh yeah <laughs> but but it, that's like you said you're, you're so deep in that like i said in that funk that you just can't see that Two mm -hmm. steps to your right is the exit, you know, to, to get out of the funk, yes. essentially. You just can't see that it's right there. You just have to go that way and, you know, keep walking. You've already gone through most of the forest, you know, keep keep going. But, mm -hmm. wow. And I will say, people don't know, and they probably never will, what their presence in my world mm -hmm. means to me. You know, they're the ones that... I could not dream as much as I didn't want to necessarily have to deal with all of this anymore. Mm -hmm. I couldn't even fathom the pain that I would cause others. Yeah. Cause I know they love me and I know they care for me. And it was that, that really held me back from anything dramatic and drastic because I could not, these are the people who have shown me love and kindness and support forever. And I couldn't tap out on them. Right. So it wasn't even about me. It was about them. It's like, I can't do this to them. People please her to the end, Jen. <laughs> oh, to the end. Yeah. And then that's when my friend said that to me. And yeah. And all of a sudden the clouds lifted. Yeah. They're still there. I still have thunderstorms. It was still a mess. It was still yeah. rocky as hell and still is and mm -hmm. still, you know, completely messy. But, uh, well, yeah, I'm kind of getting accustomed to it. I'm getting accustomed to the messy and the uncomfortable in the weirdness in, <laughs> of life. But, uh, but yeah, so that was my moment. All right, that's, so, top uh... that, Hanno. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. <laughs> she Those, throws the gauntlet down. Yeah, dang. Those are both amazing. Uh, for me, it's just uh, realizing that I'm actually completely satisfied in my relationships. That's awesome. That's, yeah. I've never had that in my life. That yeah. is, when you're the That's right, amazing. Brian said this to me the other day. It's like, when you're the right fit for someone, you're not over, you're not under, you're just the right fit and you're right fit in the world and the life and stuff. Yeah. There's nothing like that feeling. Right. And it sounds like you're the right fit right now. Yeah. And I'm absolutely satisfied and enjoy my time. And, uh, you know, it's, it's weird when you spend a whole life always thinking the grass is going to be greener and to not feel that is like, and, and I'm just not talking about it. I'm not talking about becoming complacent either. I'm just right. talking about like 
being fully engaged and just being mm-hmm. yeah and uh it's a it's a new experience so i'm really enjoying it that was i think a really great also that idea of where i just want to sabotage everything and <laughs> yeah like, yeah I don't have to. <laughs> right. My fear is always that I'm going to sabotage everything. You know, not that I, I not that I have to, but that I'm going to. It's like, well, you're going to screw this up at some point. Like you just <laughs> you just know you're going to. I'm like, yeah, you're right. You know, like <laughs> Yeah. So it's been yeah. it's been interesting in that regard too is then like that whole like well, what, what do you mean everything's okay? It can't be okay. Right. You need to make it messed up or somehow. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, we get addicted to the chaos. Yeah, absolutely. Oh boy, that's yeah. so sums me up. So yeah. Well, like oh, I said, oh yeah. Well, like I said, my exist- scenario, I'm looking for the other shoe. You know, like when <laughs> when's it dropping? Because it's like I know either I'm gonna bugger something up or something. Mm-hmm. It, like this this can't continue. <laughs> and it's funny because it absolutely can continue. The shoe doesn't <laughs> always have to drop, or maybe it will drop, but it won't be for you know 20 years or something you have no idea and you can't just live waiting for it it's horrible i learned that lesson when my dad was terminal to where i was literally waking up every day going this is day blank and they told us he's got a year and then one day i was like what are you doing like you can't live under the weight of this like if you you're just going to make yourself absolutely crazy doing this and it, it really that applies to the others if like you were saying jen you know like you wake up and you see clouds and you go well i can't do anything today it's like listen you know as a person with depression you there's days that way you know yeah but you just can't let it be weeks and months and years and you know like you just can't let it control you otherwise you become me to where you do look outside and you go i don't want to go outside and Mm -hmm. you know i don't want to go anywhere i don't want to this because you know that fear controls you so Take it from your old pal Brian. <laughs> so yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad you had that, Hano. That it's it. It's weird because I want to go. It sucks that it took you this long to find that. But also, you know, we both know you're right where you're supposed to be. You know, you appreciate the <laughs> heck out of it now. I'm sure yeah. because you've been through the other. It it doesn't matter all the all the times that it didn't work. Right. It's great to just be in this moment. That's why I always tell people it's like, yeah. you know, like I'm never gonna find the right person. I was like, Yeah, but when you do, you're gonna be so happy you're never even gonna regret that right. that whatever's gone by. It won't matter because that happens to us all the time. Yeah. When we find right. happiness, we're happy. Yep. And that's yeah, I, that. Like we've yeah. talked about countless times on here, right? It's like, you know, trying to chase that permanent happy is a fool's errand it absolutely you can't be and we shouldn't be you don't want to be happy all the time we should have ups and downs and middles like we should have days where we're meh that's okay (laughs) you know uh the goal is that hopefully you have more ups than downs but you know it's one of those things but you're gonna have downs it's just part of the game and you know also it does help you appreciate things you know, when, like, cause like I said, with what you've gone through and the different relationships you've had and the stuff you've overcome, Heno, like I said, I'm sure you appreciate the heck out of it now. Would you have appreciated it 25 years ago? Maybe not as much, you know? Yeah. Right. And <laughs> maybe it would have just been like, yeah, whatever. And maybe you would have sabotaged, <laughs> you know, cause <laughs> that I know would have happened. Yeah. <laughs> Booze. Right. Yeah. Well, that's then, what I'm saying. One thing that I, I do realize that um, in 2022, which is two years late because I'm 44 in 2022, I uh, should have happened when I was 42. But I did find the secret of life. And the secret of life is very simple. We'll see you next time. Is- no. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. No. <laughs> no. The secret of life is very simple it is life's gonna hurt you're going to have pain that is a given but what you do before the pain makes all the difference what you do is you find as much enjoyment as much satisfaction as much that you can gain from before the pain that the pain is just secondary. It is like, and if you can reach the pain and say, that was so worth it, mm-hmm. you've won. That's the meaning of life. Right. I, 
I can't help. I'm I'm laughing to myself the whole time because you keep saying the pain, and all I can think of is Princess Bride and fighting to the pain. <laughs> That's all I can think of. Is... I know. Mm. But did you like my my throwback to the Hitchhikers? Did you catch that? I'm not a person who's ever read that, so <gasps> those references are lost on me. Sacrilege. <laughs> Yeah, I know. It's a book I've been told a million times probably that I need to read, and I've never read it. For those who are not uh, familiar with The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, um, the whole goal is to find the meaning of life. And they finally build a computer that will tell you the definite meaning of life. And it does all this computation and spits out 42. That is the meaning of life is 42. Makes sense to me. Yes. So makes as much sense not, as anything else I've ever heard. There you go. Mm-hmm. So as I said, I'm about two years late because I'm 44 now. Mm-hmm. 42 was in 2020. Yep. But I'm uh, two years late. But I have it. I have the meaning of life. All right. Yeah. You're just bad at math. That's okay. <laughs> yeah. It happens. Fair enough. <laughs> All right, Heno. Let's do our our power words. Unless uh, you have something else. Our words last year. Yeah. That's why I meant. Yeah. <laughs> So the last years were, were me, me and Brian was open and Jen was present. And so I was like, is this a roll call? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. I see that. I'm, I'm definitely going with flow. Okay. Word. Gosh, what am I going for? I'm trying. Um, you go, Brian. I was going to say, uh, my issue is I'm trying to think of the right word. Um. Acceptance is about as close as I think I can get because I'm very much. Now you know what I'm. I'm gonna go with, with. Man, I don't know. I can't. I can't. Can't quite decide which word is the right word. Um, because it's a situation where I feel like I've been more honest with mm-hmm. everything. And I feel like I'm I, clarity. There's the word I'll go with, even though it took me forever to come up with the word clarity, because I feel like over the last bit of time of this past year, that that's what I've really been looking for is clarity. Um, and I feel like I'm finding it. I feel like I'm on that path and I really want to stay that way because the other words I wanted to say were like kindness, you know, to myself as far as for years and years, I've essentially beat myself up for depression and anxiety. And like I said, you know, I'm, I'm sitting here now going, there might be other causes in this that I've kind of not seen for years um, and different stuff. And just in general, just being kinder to myself. But I think clarity is the word I'm going to go with because I've seen a lot I've read a lot. I've I've tried to do a lot for myself and I think I I need to find what of these things are useful and what are essentially just for lack of a better term red herrings in my life, you know. To where it's like, yeah. "Oh, this seems like a, you know, and then it's like, "Oh, no, no, this wasn't the um so I think that's what it is. I'm I'm going to I'm still looking for clarity to try to understand not just who I am, what's causing things for me and, and then what to do. Um, Cause I'm 44 and I'm really tired of everything. I'm tired of doctor's appointments. I'm tired of new medicines. I'm tired of, you know, Oh, this is what's wrong or this is what's wrong. You know, it's like, I'm tired of the words. This is wrong. You know, mm-hmm. even like I said, you know, I read that thing a few weeks ago about like, you know, these kind of diagnoses are, are like thinking you're a horse only to find out you were actually a zebra, you know, and, and you look at life and go, oh, that's why I didn't fit in with the other group, <laughs> you know, so that kind of thing. So, yeah, clarity is going to be my word. My word is independence. It's owning who I am, owning um, what I am. And not feeling guilty, ashamed, or judged for it. And just letting all of that fall away and just say, nope, 
you may not agree with me. You may not like it. I may be making a big ass mistake. Sorry, <laughs> language. I may be making a big mistake and I'm going to fall flat on my face. But it is my decision, my mistake. I own it. Yeah. I'm independent from everybody else's opinion. Good enough. And not just that, but I think it works for you too, because independent is something you've been learning or independence is something you've been learning over the last year too, about Mm -hmm. that you can be by yourself and be okay. You know, that that's, that's okay. You don't have to please anyone else. You don't have to be anyone else. You don't have to be with anyone Mm -hmm. else, like all those things. So I think it, it works for you on a couple levels there. I think really a good choice. It does. In JKL, just for a shout out to you, girl, I'm learning how to date. She told me I don't know how to date. I'm <laughs> learning how to date. Right. Not relationship. Yep. It's a huge difference. Yeah. And it's a tough lesson. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Especially right now. Right. Good gosh. You people don't know how to date out there. Uh-uh. <laughs> I was not the only one. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, anywho, but yeah. Um, <laughs> so, I think those are very, very awesome, awesome words for a year. And I'm very curious to see how this is going to unfold. So far, the first week of uh, 2023 has not disappointed in its uh, its randomness and its uh, its uniqueness. That's for sure. Mm. Curious to see how this is all going to play out, yep. but I'm excited for it, and I hopefully you guys are too. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Well, are we good, guys, or is there more we want to talk about? No, I think we bumped our gums enough. all right before we uh we wrap this up we just want to say or at least i do and i'm sure you guys would agree um we want to say a shout out to um a special person that um has touched brian and i personally and uh and definitely his daughter has touched Hanno in a lot of ways so um we'll miss you joe and uh, you you did good by all of us. So yep. we wish you the best and uh, we wish you peace. So, all right. That being said, all right. We've talked a lot about it on this podcast, a lot of different things and touched on a lot of different um, topics. So if you have something you'd like to share with us, if you have a question for us, if you would like to continue the conversation with us, if you would like to be even on the show, please reach out to us and you know how to do this. You can reach us at our email address, which is the crazy life podcast at outlook.com. You can also reach us at uh, the crazy life podcast. Uh, Weebly.com is our website. If you would like to reach me, you can reach me by either emailing us and putting Jen at the top. Or you can reach us via our Facebook page, which Brian will tell you about shortly. So, and with that, Hanno, how can they reach you? Uh, you can reach me on Twitter, at Ida Hanno, and on Facebook and Instagram, Hanno Heiter. And I have another podcast that I do called Moving the Needle Podcast, where we talk about film. And I was just checking to see if our last episode is up, and it shows it up, but it's not letting me download it, which is kind of oh, interesting. Oh, that's weird. Yeah. Ooh. Uh, so we, um, yeah, it says episode unavailable. We have to double check on this. It's been out for a while too. That's, no wonder I didn't notice it because it probably didn't pop up. That's very weird. Huh. My feet. Yeah, this is strange. It says December twentieth. Huh. huh. Anyhow, we did. Uh, we compared to foreign films both French films, one from the late sixties and one from the two thousands. And they were both uh, movies about uh, the lead. The lead is a a woman with repressed sexuality who explores into BDSM and other type activities. And it was a blast of a conversation with myself and Sean and uh, Carmelita who joins us quite often 
Uh, so I better fix this now that I am yeah. pimping it. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna guess. That, that sounds like an amazing episode. <laughs> it was I'm... great. It was. A, we went an hour and a half. We went a little longer than we usually do, but it's a great introduction to these two movies. Uh, yeah. And, and they're they're great watches. So, uh, good one for for the family, right? Yes, exactly. Very yeah. family friendly. That's what yes. I figured. <laughs> <laughs> Bel du Jour versus the piano teacher. Ah, okay. There you go. Wow. All right. Well, we're sitting here, but like, oh, I better check lips and see what's going on. Yeah, seriously, <laughs> right? Well, you can find me on Twitter at Stunami. Uh, you can find this show on Twitter at The Crazy Life Pod, where I post when new episodes were go, go up. Yeah, I can talk. Uh, or Facebook group. God, the goop. <laughs> I'm a mess. <laughs> See, I take one one full week off of both podcasts, and this is what happens. So that's why I got to do one a week at least. I got to stay in practice. All right. Uh, our Facebook group is facebook.com slash group slash crazy life podcast. <sighs> All right. Um, my other podcast is Salty Language, which can be found at salty underscore language on Twitter or at saltylanguage.com. That's me and my best friend just talking about uh, whatever happens. Like this last week, we talked about. I don't know. I, don't, I didn't take a lot of notes this week, <laughs> but it was, uh, you know, we were talking about how we took a week off and Christmas, New Year's, all that kind of stuff. So and we talked about how uh, someone had a mannequin of Cousin Eddie from National Lampoons in their front yard and the police got called because their neighbor thought that it was a just a naked man standing in their front yard. So, um, you know, we just usually talk about pop culture and stuff like that. So if that interests you, please give us a listen. That show is not safe for work, so uh, you know uh, if if you need an alternative to Heno's family friendly podcast, we're we're your option. So uh, <laughs> um, we are part of the Tangibound Network, which can be found at tangiboundnetwork.com. So if you're looking for a network for your podcast, please go check that out, or for other shows you may be interested in, please check that out. Um, yeah, I believe that's all the links. So yeah, once again, you know, if if you're struggling, please reach out. Um, I, you know, and and please try to get help. And I, please be patient when you do. Uh, a lot of these mental health workers are over, just overwhelmed with patients right mm -hmm. now. Um, I know a few people who are trying to get into therapy right now, and they're like three, four months out type thing, and it's it stinks. Um, if you need options that, you know, there are things like, you know, better help and, uh, different ones like that, that are out there too. And there's there, you know, crisis lines and all that kind of thing. So if you just need someone to talk to, look for that or look for a support group in your area, uh, that kind of thing, or, you know, you, you know, there are support communities in Facebook and Reddit and all that kind of stuff out there too. So please, please don't be, you know, uh, try not to keep it to yourself. Please find someone to talk to. And of course, you know, check on your friends if you can, make sure they're doing okay. And uh, yeah, uh, as always, the biggest thing is just just keep going forward. Is uh, please be kind to one another. Just please keep showing kindness. Uh, I you know I keep seeing it when I'm out. I keep seeing people being nice to each other. And you read stuff on uh, you know on, online and different stories of people just showing incredible acts of kindness to one another so it doesn't even have to be um, anything that massive you know it can just be something small actually ah oh, fooey it's not there anymore dang it <laughs> oh here we go I think I, here we go okay so I found this I'm going to read this real quick as my last thing here which was, this was something I saw in uh, Upworthy on Instagram. I don't want to share it. And it's a story. It says, several years ago, I invited a Buddhist monk to speak to my senior elective class. And quite interestingly, as he entered the room, he didn't say a word. Um, he just walked to the board and wrote this. Everyone wants to save the world, but no one wants to help mom do the dishes. We all laughed. But then he went on to say to this to my students. Statistically, it's highly unlikely that any of you will ever have the opportunity to run into a burning orphanage and rescue an infant. But in the smallest gesture of kindness, a warm smile, holding the door for a person behind you, shoveling the driveway of an elderly person next door, you have committed an act of immeasurable profundity because to each of us, our life is the universe. 
This is my hope for you for the new year, that by your smallest acts of kindness, you will save another's world. So, yeah, be kind. Do something for somebody else if you can. You know, just don't be a jerk. <laughs> exactly. And awesome. I obviously echo those thoughts. And as we do our close, we love you, JKO. We're with you. So with that, you guys and everyone listening, go out and have the absolute best week you can possibly have. And do not forget, as always, wiggle those toes. <laughs>